Hi everyone and welcome again to the Oracle Data Guard course. In this lecture, I will talk about using the Recovery Manager in a Data Guard configuration. In this lecture, you will learn how to do the following. Describe the general best practices of using RMAN in a Data Guard configuration. Manage the Data Guard databases in the Recovery Catalog. Manage the Data Guard databases in the Recovery Catalog. Make the data guard related configuration in RMAN. Recover a missing data file in the primary database from a standby backup. And refresh a physical standby database with changes made to the primary database. Using RMAN for taking backup of the database that is part of a data guard configuration is not actually different from taking backup of a standalone database. However, RMAN is aware of the databases included in a data guard configuration. It has a tight integration with the data guard and it provides you solutions to some recovery scenarios that you only face in data guard. In this lecture, I will cover the features in RMAN that are designed for Oracle data guard. Here, I'm showing you some best practice guidelines when you use RMAN to plan for backup and recovery in a data guard configuration. First, it is recommended to take backup of the primary database and all the standby databases. This will reduce the risk of having a corrupted backup. Also, if the databases are in different sites, having the backup in the same site makes it quicker to restore the database from the backup. The second recommendation is to maintain copies of your backup files on-site and off-site. The off-site copy may save your day if the worst scenario took place and some disaster happened in both the primary and the standby sites in the same time. Don't assume that this will never happen. As far as there is a possibility that this could happen, no matter how tiny is this possibility, you have to be ready for it. When you take backup set of a database using RMAN, it is advisable to set file per set equal to one. This reduces the recovery time because when you do that, Oracle will not need to spend time looking for the required data file in the backup set file. Another advice is to define more than one channel when you take backup with RMAN. Depending on your I.O. bandwidth and the number of cores in the CPU, this should improve the backup time. When you take a backup of your database, use the Check Logical parameter. This parameter will check for logical corruption within the data blocks as the backup is being taken. Furthermore, you're advised to turn on Block Change Tracking option or BCT. This would significantly improve that database incremental backup time. I will talk in more details about this point in a later slide. It is highly recommended to use the Arban Recovery Catalog for your backup and recovery plan in a data guard configuration. When you do that, you can use backup taken from one database to recover another database. If you do not use the recovery catalog, each database in your configuration knows nothing about the backup taken in the other databases. When you want to register your data guard configuration databases in the recovery catalog, you need to register only the primary database. For the standby databases, once you connect to them as target in RMAN command prompt, they will automatically be registered in the catalog. However, for a logical standby database to be used in the recovery catalog, its guard setting must be set to standby value. To distinguish between the databases registered in the catalog, RMAN is using the DB unique name parameter. Every backed up data file is associated with a DB unique name. It represents the database from which the backup was taken. In RMAN command prompt, 
if you want to obtain list of the standby databases registered in the catalog, use the command list db unique name of database. If a standby database is not used anymore in your configuration, you need to unregister the database from the recovery catalog. For that, use the unregister db unique name command. This command will remove the association of the database with any backup file from the recovery catalog database. But it will not delete the backup file records from the catalog. In other words, when you unregister a database, Rman updates the database name for the backup files to null. The backups are still recorded but have no owner. You can execute the change reset db unique name command to associate the ownership of the backup sets to a different database. If you specify including backups on the unregister command, then Rman removes the backup metadata for unregistered database as well. Use the Rman list report and show commands with the for db unique name clause to view information about a specific database. Take the first statement in the slide as an example. List archive log all for db unique name or a db underscore s2. This command will list all the archived readalog files registered in the oradb underscore s2 database. When you configure rman for a database in a data guard configuration, you're advised to consider the following configuration. First, you have to enable the archive log deletion policy. You don't want the archived redo log files to be accumulated in the database forever. For that reason, you need to set up a deletion policy. For a primary database, you can set a policy to delete all the redo that has been shipped to all the standby databases. For a standby database, you can set a policy that will delete all the redo that has been applied. Secondly, you need to tell Rman how to connect to all the databases in your configuration. You should always define the connect string for all the databases involved in your data guard configuration. You do this using the command configure db unique name, followed by the database unique name value, followed by connect keyword, followed by the TNS naming descriptor that you defined in the tnsnames.ora file. In the code example showing in the slide, you can see that the statement that you would use to configure the connect string for our primary and standby databases. Resync catalog command is used to synchronize between the database control file and the, and the recovery catalog database. In data guard configuration, to specify the standby database you are synchronizing, you should use the from db unique name clause to specify which standby database you are synchronizing. As showing in the slide, you should define the connect string before issuing the resync command because Rman needs to know how to connect to the standby database. One nice feature in Rman when used in a data guard configuration is the ability to restore a lost data file in the primary database from the standby database. The procedure to do that is as follows. Take the missing data file offline in the primary database. In an Rman command prompt, restore the data files from the standby over the network. Use the command restore data file from service as shown in the slide example. The rest of the procedure is similar to the traditional recovery procedure. You recover the data file and then set it online. 
if the connection between the primary database and the standby database has been lost for a long time, it may take very long time to ship all the pending readolog files and apply them in the standby database. Oracle 12C introduced a better solution. A new command is now available in RMAN which created an incremental backup in the primary database. And then it uses that backup to roll forward the data files in the standby database and make it synchronized with the primary database. The command is recover database from service. The ORADB in the example is the next service name configured in RMAN for the primary database. The no redo clause means that the redo must not be applied during the recovery. For this command to succeed, the standby database must be mounted and the redo apply must be stopped. After you restore the data files, you should restore the control file in the standby database from the primary database. The command to do that is restore standby control file from service. The full detailed procedure to refresh a physical standby database from the primary database is well documented in the documentation. Please refer to the document Oracle Database Backup and Recovery User's Guide. Search for the section Rolling Forward a Physical Standby Database using the Recover command. In a data guard configuration, all RMAN backups can be offloaded to a single standby database, except backups of the SP file. Backups of the SP file can only be restored to the database from which they were backed up. Therefore, you need to take backup of the SP files in all the databases in your data guard configuration. Block change tracking or BCT is used in Oracle to increase efficiency of RMAN incremental backup. This is very handy for large databases because it significantly reduces the backup time. Some DBAs are reluctant about enabling BCT because they believe it will take up a lot of disk space, especially if you have heavy loaded databases. But actually this assumption is not practically true. For example, for a one terabyte database, you might need a BCT file of only 40 MB. Unfortunately, in a standby side, if you want to enable BCT option, you should purchase the active data guard license. The slide is showing examples of the commands that you would use to enable the BCT and obtain information about it. In conclusion, there is not much difference between using RMAN in a traditional single instance standalone database and using it in a database and using it in a data guard configuration. In general, you only need to be aware about using DB unique name option when managing the backup files in RMAN. In this lecture, you should have learned how to do the following. Describe the general best practices of using RMAN in a data guard configuration. Manage the data guard databases in the recovery catalog. Manage the data guard related configuration in RMAN. Recover a missing data file in the primary database from a standby backup. And refresh a physical standby database with changes made to the primary database. The next lecture is a practice lecture. You will practice some of the concepts described in this lecture. Thanks for staying with me. See you in the next lecture.